Vibe. Hi, everybody. I'd like to welcome everybody to Vibe Time with Jerry with my co-host, David Flowers. Hey, y'all. And our special guest, Haunted oh. MD. Oh, thank you. I've been you. waiting, or I have. I'll just say <laughs> I have been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for you to come back on. So I'm glad that you're back on. Well, thank you. That means a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you have me back on. Yeah, I like coming coming on with you guys. And yeah, we like fun. having you. You're, we like having you. My favorite thing with you is some of the, the educational things that you put out there and equipment is the other thing. That's yeah, what, you did. Oh, you've always said that. Yeah. Yeah. And I was yeah. thinking recently, um, you know, it's, it's always hard to kind of come up with what to post about, but I was thinking about maybe I need to do some more equipment ones. Cause I remember when I first started doing Haunted MD, I tried to do a lot of those different things, you yeah. know, kind of how to use equipment and kind of the pluses and minuses and all that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought about resurrecting some of that stuff again, because <laughs> well, you know, a lot of, good. yeah, because a lot of, I mean, a lot of people don't go way back in time, you know, like because you know, I started doing a hundred MD thing in 2018, May of 2018. So there's a lot of stuff back then. I don't know if people ever get back to, as far as you know, the different equipment and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we liked it. I liked it when you did the different equipment and stuff because it helped me determine whether or not I was going to get that. Yeah. I think the Should body cam, remember you were looking at the body cams. We right. about, yeah. 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 You were the reason why I got the body cam and the Olympus recorder too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Those are the only ones I use. I actually yeah. have a real nice one. I was going to try to start using it. It's a taskman like the, with the, it's like a 360 recorder. I don't know why I just never use it. I kind of, you kind of get to, I'm kind of like an old dog in a way. Like I get used to what I like and, you know, so I kind of stick with the Olympuses, but I have this real nice taskman, you know, it's, it's like, you know, it's supposed to be super sensitive. I just, I don't know. I just never got, never started using it very much. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I I, haven't yeah I've got one. a task cam as well. And the only thing I don't like about it for about the first, I'd say minute, you got a little buzzing sound. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then, then, Eventually, it'll clear up and it works great. Do you find uh, when you use your that task cam, does it do you get better EVPs compared to like the Olympus, or do you or what do you think? Uh, I get really good EVPs with the, da the task cam, but my best EVPs come with the body camera. Yeah, yeah. you know that's a good point. Yeah. I actually, I catch anymore when I investigate, although I haven't done a lot lately. You know, is you catch more EVP on the on the. On the, on the on the body cams yeah because yeah. very rarely with the body cams now i'm not usually using my recorders as much as i used to yeah uh, so. yeah and i think on the task cam it's almost like instantaneous when you're getting that evp whereas the body cam you know you're you're going back and you're kind of reviewing it and you're hearing something whereas i think the task cam it's just like instant oh what was that you know and then you you can go back and listen to it but yeah, that's that's the advantage with the task cam is that it's like an instant, instant. Whereas the body camera, you got to kind of wait and download it. Yeah, yeah. even on the I don't know how yours is, Dave, but on the task cam, the one I have, even has the sound bar. So like if you're watching, and you could potentially see even mm -hmm. the yeah. sound bar move. You know, if it's quiet, and then you could see that it's maybe a register or something. So that's kind of cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That that if I had one complaint about the body camera, it's the playback. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's a minor complaint. Yeah, yeah. I pretty much, you know, when I was investigating, that's all I kind of used. Hey, Shayla. Hey, Shayla. Hey, Ronnie. For all Hi. my cameras, I use the body cam, you know, to wear, but then also tripods and stationary. Well, they're so nice too because you can just pop them down, either stick it on a tripod or if there's a room with a desk or a table, you can just stick it right there on the table. It's yeah. they're so nice, you know, just to kind of pop. And they have such a wide view and. You can do the uh, the night vision, or you can even buy the the full spectrum ones. You know, you can get those now too. And so they're just they're pretty handy. It's that was probably yeah. the main camera I use besides like my cell phone camera if I'm running that. But um, yeah, yeah. And, and the one thing that has me so impressed about the body camera is how long that battery lasts under night vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's almost an eight hour thing because I, I told him I was downloading my body camera footage. When was it last week? I think last week. 
Yeah. And I was like, where are all these? It was a list of freaking files. And I was like, where did all these files come from? And then I start looking and I was like, it's 2 a.m. in the morning, 3 a.m. in the morning. And what happened was I accidentally forgot to cut my body camera off and kind of chucked it in my case and went about my business. Yeah, and yeah. Trunk of my car the whole time. And I was like, dang, this little sucker records for how many hours? Over eight hours, right? Yeah. Is what, what almost it got eight me. hours. It's almost a little bit eight less than eight hours. hours. I've done that too, where I put them in the bag. I thought I turned them off or they turned back on because they got bumped. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, you know, yeah. you know, like all this. All this video, or this yeah. is usually dark with noise, or you got a video of inside your bag or something, yeah. something like that. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's yeah, pretty yeah, the body cams are nice. And, the, and well, now they're even getting better. I think the other thing I like about them, I don't know how you guys feel about it, is you can break it into smaller chunks of time. Like I usually record in the five minute blocks just because I have, I think I have a session deficit. So it's easier to watch. Like instead of watching like a 45 minute block, I can watch five minute block and I feel like. It's easier for me to get through it, even though it's the same time, right? But the um, have those like natural blocks, like every five minutes, it's easier for me to watch the video. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I might um, have to try that because my yeah, AD triple HD kicks in and I gotta leave. Yeah, yeah. Our body cams they they record in ten minute blocks. Yeah, yeah. So you can you can adjust them too. I think. Oh, you can. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think you can. It depends what you got. Like mine, I can go the smallest. I can go is five minutes, and I think the longest I can go is forty five. But you can do like five, ten, fifteen. Something yeah. like that. So oh, you can yeah. change. You have to just go in your menu, yeah. depending on what kind of camera you have. But you can break them down in different settings. I, I like the ten minute one. Ten minutes I, good too. I, I'm, I'm good for ten minutes. Like when I get yeah, over ten, 10 minutes, minutes, yeah, I get over ten minutes, I start mind going everywhere else. Yeah, yeah, I think ten minutes is a good blog too. Because yeah, it is weird. Because I have a hard time like if I sit I try sit to watch a real long video. Yeah. yeah, you're like, no, yeah, nope, got to get up and do something. Yeah, and, I, and we're starting to buy more of the body cameras, and when I get a few more, I'm just going to totally get rid of my DVR system. Yeah, no, I hear you. I, I don't even really set mine up that much anymore. Um, the only last time I used mine was I did a project at the Hinsdale House. We're actually um, working working with some guys that are write, writing a book. I'm not doing a lot of the writing, but this other guy is doing a lot of it. Brandon Masulo, uh, Jerry. Brandon Masulo, he's the main author, but there's four of us working on it. Um but we went to Hensdale and did a, like a scientific kind of approach to Hensdale. And that was the last time I used my body, my uh, DVR. No, actually, no, I used my DVR in a private investigation I did, but I don't, I don't use it that much anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's really, it's hard to review all that. And then I don't know how yours is Dave, but um, I can't record sound on it. So it's just all video. Yeah. Yeah. Mine same way. I've, I've yeah. got, got microphones for it. I plug them in, but they don't record. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird with it. Then I, I got a newer one and it can record sound like on one camera, something like that. I don't know how it works, but yeah, it's kind of a bummer because you can't record sound on it. Yeah. So, but it gets and, to be a lot of video to watch. Yeah. And then the, the <laughs> video quality on, on mine, it's just, it's just not there. Yeah. It's all pixelated and everything. But sometimes it's really a lot of work to set them up. If you got wired, if it's wired, yeah. you got to run those wires, set it up, break it down. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's wired. Yeah, that's what mine is too. Yeah, we yeah. just find it's easier to set up body cameras in various rooms because between the two of us, we have how many body cameras? Five, right? Uh, five. Yeah, five. you've got three and I've got two. Yeah, that's how I was. That's basically what I do now too. Um, what I was doing, yeah. Yeah, it makes it easier. Even though you got all those body cameras to review, but still. Yeah. Better than too, I don't know like how you guys do it, but sometimes I might not get to all of it, but it's nice because you might have an event happen like, you know, there was a noise at two o'clock in the morning. So you can go back and if you have a camera in that area, you can kind of find that because sometimes I find I can't review all my evidence. This is yeah. not enough time, but it's nice because you're like, oh, good. I had a camera on that when that happened. So, mm -hmm. but. yeah, because I we two, three Mondays ago now, David was upstairs in the manor house doing the tour. And we, we split the tour and I was outside doing the tour and all of a sudden out of nowhere, the lights cut off, cut on in one of the rooms downstairs and my body camera picked that up, just happened oh. to get it. And it I shocked me. And so it threw me off on my tour because I'm going, <laughs> you know, and 
I'm facing towards the manor house and people are facing me. So they didn't see what I saw, you yeah. know, and it was really cool because that same night there was some people in what we call the hops cord room and they were doing a EVP session. And one of the tours said, are you an officer and clear as day on the SB seven box? He got, yes, I am. Wow. Wow just like that and he played it for us and i was like can you please send that to me and we haven't i haven't i'm sure david hasn't received the email yet so that's like a very to me a very powerful spirit if you can cut that light on like that and talk like you and i are talking that's that's pretty powerful that's pretty yeah it's pretty yeah it's pretty um pretty cool <laughs> pretty good mm -hmm. evidence or right? interaction yeah, yeah. It is yeah, weird too, like how like some spirits can seem to do that and others don't. It's really weird. Yeah. And I'm wondering if it's the same one that turned the light on for us in the smoking room back in December. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we had one, oh my God, he just did, and we have it all on body camera. He didn't want us in there. He kept telling us to get out. And David didn't hear it, but the, the ladies that was with us on the tour heard it. And then, you know, we had a service bell. We bought, I had bought a service bell and I was like, well, let's just use that tonight and see what it does. And they, the man, you know, David said, if you want us to leave, just, you know, ring the bell. Well, it did more than that. It cut the lights off because we had the chandelier dimmed. It cut the chandelier all the way up and said, leave. Wow. Did it ever we ring the bell? No, it didn't ring the bell. bell, but it was strong enough to turn that light all the way up and tell us to leave. And it's so clear on that body camera. And both of us had our body cameras running. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. So it's it's just really cool. Who to, do you guys think it's who do you guys think is there? Is it the owners of the original owners of the property or who do you think are the yeah. main spirits there? Yeah, we we think it is the man who built the house. Mr. Yeah. Tolliver. Think that's who we think it is, and he was a he was an officer. He was an officer in the in the colonial army. Wow. And he sounds and so intelligent, so intelligent. It's like he's just very intelligent. <laughs> wow, that's cool. Yeah. Lunar Paranormal has the coolest spirit box. When I met it Don, says, Lunar the Paranormal has the coolest spirit box. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. No, sure go ahead. Ask her. I don't. I'd have to ask her. I I always ask her, but I don't. It's, so she uses it. It's like a. It's like a. Like a. It's like a. It's not as. It's not a SB seven or whatever. It's like a regular kind of radio. It's like a maybe you know like a rectangle. You know, like it's a rectangular thing, like maybe that big. It's silver. It looks like just like a little radio you'd have on your kitchen counter or something. But it's rigged up. The way it's rigged up is it's you know it works like a spirit box. But she gets like amazing responses through that. But it's not your typical. Like it's not the ones we that we all use. I don't know. She, I think she has one or two of them. She got. I have to ask her again. I think she got them off of eBay. I don't know if she's listening. If she can reply. Um, but yeah, she's Sheree. Like she gets these amazing responses out of spirit box because I'm always a little skeptical. But every time we I work with her and we go like to Miller Kite or even to Elkton or wherever or even Swananoa, like the the responses she get. I mean, they're like you can tell that something's coming through. Like. It's not just a DJ or it's not just a, you know, a, you know, a sound bite from one of the radio stations. It's like, there's a voice that's doesn't, that's different, you know, coming yeah. through there. And like, I don't really use the spirit box much for me. I don't get much interaction, but she's able to kind of get these, this, this interaction through this box and something about her or the box. I don't know, <laughs> but, I, but you know, it's amazing. I'm always blown away. Cause I'm always like, is that for real? And I'm like, Holy cow. And it says my name a lot. Like you'll hear Don and then it'll say her, her husband's name's Chris. So a lot of times, like when me and Chris and, and she are at like Miller Kite, it'll say Chris, Don, Don, hey, Doc. So we think there's Stonewall Jackson spirits at the Miller Kite Museum. And it comes through kind of consistently. I mean, you know, even for people who are real skeptical, it's like it's kind of consistently Stonewall Jackson spirit there. It's kind of weird mm -hmm. and like, weird and cool at the same time. But she but she gets these the spirit box she uses is pretty amazing. I'd have to ask her again. But it's not like a typical thing you'd see. It's like a like a like a Radio Shack hack or something like that. Yeah, Ryan Rickard yeah. has a question for you. Sure. Says, a couple of years ago, 
you experimented with a device that held dowsing rods, and you were hoping they would work with the spirits without you, without you actually holding them. Did that ever happen for you? I made a setup that mounts on a tripod, copper dowsing rod sitting in a copper tube, but I haven't tried to use it, but twice with no response. Well, it's funny you mention that because I was goofing around the other day and I actually made like another model. <laughs> I just made this, it's so funny he's asking that question. I just made this like, probably like last week. It's like another model of, uh, it's on a, it has the, shit, I can't find the camera. It's got the tripod oh, cool. and, the, and the dowsing rods. Um, but yeah, um, I never did have them move. No, I never had a move. And I tried even like, you know, the place where I used to, where we, I still work for the same hospital, but I'm in a different building. But the one building I used to be in, it's so much activity in there. But they, I even tried it there. And, you know, I haven't tried it much consistently, like at like places like, you know, like the Manor House, like you guys are talking about, or, or Miller Kite, those kind of things. But to, so far, I haven't had them move on their own, you know, but I've, I've tried my best. <laughs> Have you taught them how to use it? Yeah, yeah, I'll sit there and I'll say, you know, you know, you, you know, cross them, yes or no, that kind of thing. So it seems like, you know, somebody has to be holding them when they work because I've I've held them and used them and I felt them moving. So I don't know what, you know, and I, I don't think it was me making a move. Um, but yeah, I haven't I have not to answer the question. I have not had them move yet. But I need to I need to take them to like a place like it's notorious that has it's definitely haunted, you know, like Miller Kite or you know some place like you guys have and see. Have you guys ever tried it yourself? Have you ever tried a stationary dowsing rods or? No, I've never tried. tried Let me see how you have that set up. I want to see again. So I'll show you. So it's um, very interesting. So, so it's a these are like little it's a little mini tripod from Amazon. So it's a okay. tripod and then it has a it has a camera do thinger cameras a camera thing so you screw in a it just is a holder for like a cell phone mm -hmm. um i can't get it on camera right so it's a cell phone holder on the camera thing and then i put the rods kind of clamped in here with the with these clips but let me let me see if i can stand this up so it normally would stand up like this and then there's a let me see if i can take it apart for you i actually thought about me maybe, maybe selling these put a bunch together and sell them if i get if i start doing haunting md stuff again but so yes, yeah, so this is a tripod. So it's a regular tripod with a little camera holder, that kind of thing. And then what? Uh, what the? What's holding the dowsing rods? It's just like a. Let me just stop and take it apart. It's just a cell. It's just a cell phone holder. Such a pain in the ass. I had to ask. Yeah. That's no, okay. I can't get okay. the camera. It's just a cell phone holder okay. that screws into the camera thing. And then what I do is take the rods, just turn it on its side, and put the rods in. <laughs> <laughs> the camera. So I put the rod on on each prong of the cell phone holder, and then I just clamp it on with the clamp. With the clamp, you probably could do yes. anything, even like with uh, you probably could use like you know plastic ties, like the zip ties that tie it on there, that kind of thing. And then these these rods are actually from um, uh, she makes them all the time. What's what is her name? Try cam drawing a blank on her. She goes to all the paranormal conferences. Uh, I'm drawing a blank on her, but she actually makes these rods. They're real fancy ones. I was going to say, those are kind of neat looking. I haven't seen them, and I like the length. Yeah, the, so the company is Copper Copper Mosaic, and I'm totally drawing a blank on her name, but this is actually a shorter one. Yeah. These are shorter, but then she, I have longer ones, too. And then she has little balls on the end. These little balls are glow in the dark. Um, well, that's neat. If you're using them at nighttime. But, yeah, basically, yeah, just a little tripod, a little cell phone holder, um, dowsing rods, and a couple of clamps, something to clamp it on to the – to clamp it onto like this end right here. So you, you know, so you'd have your dowsing rod and then put it in, put it in like this. I can't get it right. But yeah, so you have it and then holds onto there. And then the nice thing too about the the cell phone holder is you can screw it, you can open it wider, close it, you can close it narrower, wider, if you want your rods close together or not. So then it ends up being like hey, this. Ryan. So yeah. I but no, that. I never did have a move, but I still got I think I gotta still work with it more. I know, like haunted locations and things. Yeah, I was going to say, because, I mean, you it's just like we bought these little, like, 
twist on and off bullets and we only used them one time and like dave says you really got to use them more than just the one time yeah you know because what if the energy is not high that particular day or what if they just don't feel like messing with stuff yeah, that I mean, day here's, here's the here's what the tripod looks it's it's small pretty small and then it extends out so if you um the legs extend out so you can make it as you know kind of taller if you want it's basically what whole cameras you can even hold it use it for like a cell you hold your uh your your um your whatchamacallit, your body cams if you can put a clamp on the end there. Mm -hmm. But yeah. You no, know, I never did have a move. And then, oh. and then I have um I have this thing too I made. I, I think you guys saw that the the jar with I the little did see that. Yeah, yeah, I did see that. Put that on the tripod too. So you can have it like the the cell phone holder and then it holds the the bottle and you have a tripod if you want to do it on a tripod. So let me see I'll zip if you go farther back. So this is what it looks like. Yeah, I have a jar that I made with um, a pendulum in it, and it's got a couple coffin nails in there. But I just i I didn't have luck with it. But I didn't. I only tried it one or two times. It's sitting in my pendulum department. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't even tried to stick one yet. I just kind of came up with that. I haven't really took it out on any investigations. So I think if I do get back out investigating, I have to try that. The problem with that is you just got to keep an eye on it. Yeah. Either got to watch it or put a camera on it and review the evidence. Yeah, um, yeah. So, um, I like. The, yeah, to me, it's like it would be cool to see something like that move or turn on its own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, know. I like the dousing rod thing because there's if it's sitting on a tripod, nobody can dispute that you moved your hands. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, if That's I ever give them the move, hopefully I catch it on camera and I'll definitely uh, post it for everybody. Yeah. I think you should make them. Send me one. I'll buy it. Yeah, I will. I, I might do it. They're actually not too bad. I got a. I I was gonna. I thought about a couple of years ago doing it. So I bought a lot of the pieces parts. I just kind of took a break and I never did get back to it. Well, um, guess you got a job to do. That's right, man. Chop, chop. I've had some requests. People have mentioned they will, you know are interested in it. Yeah, so, so you yeah. might as well get to stepping. That's right, man. Hot MD dowsing rods tripod. Yeah. Thing. yeah. I think you'd come up with some cool stuff. Thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah, you should do it. You yeah. should do it. I'll well, I got it. my. Well, I got my uh, cat. This is other. I love the bottles. I got my cat balls in a bottle. Oh, you know, that's cool. So there's like three of them in there. So I always. It's cool. The whole idea is just trying to isolate, trying to, you know, try to cancel out all the environmental things as much as you can. So people, you know, yeah. you know, if the balls get touched, you know, you're not breathing on them or whatever and stuff like that. So. I have I have a bunch of cat balls in a plastic tub. Yeah, that's good. You that's know, you can kind of take out. You can eliminate some of the variables. So if you mm -hmm. have a something happen, you're like, well, wait a minute. There's something had to touch that. Yeah, yeah. that's an interesting. That's that's interesting too. Then that way you can't say, you know, oh well, she touched that with her hand if it's sitting in something. Yeah. So well, I think especially too, like with the bottle, this this bottom one. Or any kind of container, really. If you have, like, you know, I got three in there. But if you can get the top one to go off and none of the rest go off, you know, as long as they're fresh, you got to make sure they're fresh ball, you know, fresh and, you know, not dying, batteries aren't dying. But I think if you can, say, touch the top one consistently and the other ones aren't going off, it makes you really, to me, it makes it more credible because you're like, well, how the heck is it, you know, if it's vibration, then the other one should go off, too. If it's just the top right. one's going off, you know, how would you, you know, how do you explain that? So... So I think, you know, or you could say, you know, do this one, then do that one. And then do this, you know, you can say, well, touch the other one. And so I think it gives you a chance to kind of like try to validate what's happening a little bit better. So, yeah. Uh, anyways, yeah, that's what I got. <laughs> that was really cool. So have you been out a lot or you said you haven't been out a lot? I haven't investigated yet. Um, I've thought about doing uh, some solo stuff, but I think I'm going to do a, uh, I might do a um, a private one with Cherie from Lunar um, in September up at the Elkton Town Hall. Then I know um, ISDP uh, Terry Osborne. I've been they wanted me to come out with them sometime, so um, I might go out with them sometime. I got to wait though; it's too hot now. Like I don't, it's you know, oh, especially God, if you're yeah. outside or something like that. I'd rather do it when it's cooler and things like that. Yeah, so, yeah. No, I haven't actually. I haven't investigated in a while. A while. Yeah. Well, you're just getting back on things too, so yeah, no. So that's really cool. And you're always welcome to come out to the manor house anytime. 
Thanks, hey, man. man. I, would, I might take you up on that with all those spirits out there. Yeah. And, and just to hang with you guys, too, would be great. Yeah, you'd have fun. Yeah. And you know what? We You might be a perfect trigger object. Yeah. Sometimes it does help being a doctor. I know, like, at Miller Kite House in Elkton, a lot of times you say there's a doctor, and, like, people are like, help. In fact, me and Cherie, we had a video we did at the town hall in Elkton. was also Civil War Hospital. They got a big tree out there, and we had kind of an interaction. It seemed like there was somebody had got shot in their leg, and oh, they were gosh. trying. We were going back and forth about me being a doctor, and go, you know, and you, well, how can we help you? And so it does like seem like maybe it, it helps. To have a yeah, the, the house was used as a Confederate hospital. The one manor house. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, well, that's cool though. You should come out sometime. You have to get. You, did you guys say you do like? Is it every Friday night? Friday night it's or something? On like Monday, Friday. Wednesday, and Saturday. Okay. You have to see probably when it gets a little cooler. <laughs> yeah. I can't yeah. take the heat. I, mean, I was talking to my actually we me my wife and uh, my daughter went out today to the stores. To Walmart and to Costco, it was so hot just getting out of the car. It's like, it's just, it's, it, you know, it stinks because you want to go outside and kind of do stuff, but it's like, it's just too hot. It's hot. You know? Yeah, that's why my face is all red today. I've been out, out, yeah. out in the heat working for about, I was out for about an hour. Oh, wow. So I it's like, as I've, as I've gotten older, I'm not, I don't have the tolerance like I used to. Like when I was younger, I mean, I didn't like it, but I was able to put up with it. Now that I've gotten older, I know how you guys feel. But yeah. now that I got older, it's like I don't have the patience anymore. <laughs> I'm like, right, right? You're like, I don't want to suffer. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, when I got out of my car after work this evening, the uh, temperature gauge on it said 105. No. Holy cow. Yeah, that's just too hot. And where do you yeah. guys live? You guys live out towards the Virginia Beach area? Or? I, 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 I live, live in Newport in, News. Yeah, oh, I live God. in Urbana. Okay. Wow. Yeah. I live in Urbana, so it's that's hot, man. Holy cow. Yeah. Do you think that was 105 because it, it was the car had been sitting, or is that how hot it was out there? It, it was hot. It was hot. So wow. it, it might have been heat index. I don't I don't know how the temp, yeah. how the thermostat works in the vehicles. It said it might have been heat index, but either way it's hot. Yeah. yeah. It was like, yeah, 102, 103 out in them horse fields today. And wow, cow fields and steer fields. <laughs> it's crazy, yeah. Even the, even the mean rooster hid from me today. He was like, I ain't coming out there to chase you today. I was like, like too high, man. Name is Ryan. And I was like, Ryan, where are you at? I could hear him cackling at me. And I knew he wanted to come and chase me and just try to spur me like he did last time. And he was too hot to come out. And I was like, where are you at, Ryan? <laughs> so I'll get you next truck. time. <laughs> yeah, he's, like, he's like, I ain't coming out in this heat. You're nuts. He stayed under the truck and, and did his rooster stuff with me under the truck. <laughs> wow. What do you, is that... Is that where you're working, you said, or is that something? What do you I do? do there? Reiki. I do Reiki energy oh, work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I have an entire little farm that I go to. I have a few of them, but that was the one for today. And last time I went there, the little rooster Ryan tried to spur me, but he, you know, I told him, I was like, I'll drop kick you off this porch. But today it was just too hot. He couldn't get to me at all. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you need to do Reiki in that rooster. Come as coming down. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Reiki that rooster. Very, He's very territorial right now. He's got all his little cackling hens. So, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when do you think you'll get back into things? Is it going to be a slow? I, I Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm trying to do more posts and all that. I think what happened, you know, we, that kind of led me to going off. I just was doing too much. And then, you know, there's some personal things going on and all that. I kind of just let it, you know, sometimes the social media stuff, it just gets to be too much. And a lot of it is my own fault, right? I just, I think now what I'm doing differently is I'm just pacing myself. I'm like, I think before I was like, I felt like, man, I had to do everything and, you know, keep posting stuff. And I put a lot of pressure on myself to the point where it wasn't fun anymore. And it was just like, you know, I don't really enjoy this. It's more of a job and it's stressing me out, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, 
So then you know, like, I think I was doing stuff every weekend and it was affecting my family life and, you know, things like that. So, but no, I, I'm just, I like to get out there and you know start investigating a little bit more. Um, I definitely don't want to get back into the craziness. Like, you know, getting out here and there is kind of cool and, and doing stuff like that. I want to, I don't know when I'm going to do it, but I keep thinking about, I want to do more of like some, maybe some solo investigations. Mm -hmm. I did one right before I kind of decided to take a break um, at this Bennett or uh, Airbnb around me here and did a solo thing. And that was kind of interesting where it's just you because, you know, you could kind of account for everything because there was nobody else in the house. It was just me. Um, the downside to it is when stuff happens, like you're, you get excited, but there's nobody to share it with. Because I remember stuff would be happening like, oh, my God, look at this. And it's like, it was just me. <laughs> it's just me and whatever's there. <laughs> so um, but I, I wanted to try to do a few more kind of solo things just to kind of kind of experience things on my own to see, you know, so that way I can say, hey, there's nothing else. There's nobody else here. It's just me. You know, it, 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 to make sure that what I'm really experiencing is what I'm experiencing, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but I haven't really I haven't really committed to doing too much of that yet. But Well, I mean, you'll get there when you get there. And with social media, there's just like you got to find that in between balance. I mean, there's some people that just absolutely live on social media and I don't see how they do that. I don't. It's like they have no other job but that. And I'm going, there's, there's so community. much more to life. I mean, I'll get on there and I'll post some stuff and I get right back off. I just, I got things to do, a life. So I don't always, when people comment on things, I try to get to them, but I don't always have time to comment back on things. You know, I just, I don't have to live on it. Yeah, it could definitely, it could definitely be a time, a time suck for sure. Yeah. I know it was, but then some people have seen to make a living off of it. You know, these, uh, you know, like, what is it? Um, in, These influencers and all that. It's, it's yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah. So yeah, I, I do want to get back out and do some stuff. I just want to pace myself. And then, like I said, maybe do a little more solo stuff and maybe even try to incorporate maybe some more scientific type stuff. Yeah. I like the scientific yeah. stuff. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> That's yeah, just like, just, I just try different things like you know like like these dowsing rods and even that setup these different setups i have mm -hmm. not that i can't do that when i work with other people but sometimes you know it's you you, you know I, like i want to give it time like you know right. do the rods and give it a sit there for a while and see what happens and you know and that kind of thing and i feel bad to do that if i'm you know maybe working with another group of people or something like that so well, i fully understand that though you need that time because sometimes john savage is a perfect example He's really fun to be with on the scientific side, but when he really gets into it, he's really, that's tunnel vision. And I, I know John Savage don't mind if I say anything about yeah. him, like that, but he, he's, he's focused on that and that's it. And you have to kind of step back and watch him do it. That's how I'm, well, I met him on a ghost on a ghost hunt at one of the local libraries, but there was a young lady and her car broke down. And he did everything he could to get her home. And you just left him alone. Yeah. <laughs> so I understand that. You know, he was like everything he could to get made. And she made sure she got, he got her home too. But he was focused on that and that only. And it works the same thing with what you're talking about. Yeah. So the group yeah. of people are going to step back and let him do his thing. <laughs> what, do you guys, what do you guys think about people investigating on their own? I know some people think it's kind of foolish, but for do solo investigations, do you guys I've think that's a bad it. thing? It, I've done it. I think it it depends on their approach. Yeah. If, yeah. if they're if they go at it the way Jerry and I go at it, there's not going to be a problem. Yeah. But you have some in there that they learn how to ghost hunt watching Zach Baggins. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. And um, could um could get a little bit of problem there. Yeah, so I hear it, you it, now. It just depends on their their approach. Yeah, it's so funny you mentioned Zach. I I haven't been watching his show. I watched it earlier on, like years ago, because I thought they had pretty good evidence. But I put it on the other night, just a couple nights ago, and I was curious because they actually were. It seemed like a cool place, but then he started doing his his stuff, and I had to turn it off. <laughs> like yeah. right away, he's like, you know, he's like, you know, almost getting possessed, and it's like, dude, you're having some pretty cool evidence happen. Why do you got to like add this all this unnecessary drama? <laughs> 
I mean, I know it's for the ratings. For that it's reason. Cool. <laughs> but, you know, it kind of takes away from because it's like it's, it seems like he was having some good interaction. But right away, he's like, oh, no. Now I feel all this and I feel all that. And I'm like, I was waiting for him to say he's possessed. And I'm like, how come you just can't investigate and just and just not do that? <laughs> yeah, enjoy it. Yeah, I guess the ratings would fire him if he actually enjoyed it. Yeah, so I end up I watched for like maybe 10, 15 minutes and had to turn it off, unfortunately. Yeah. And I'm not trying to rag on the guy. He's definitely no, doing no, 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 no. You know, no, it's I, just like yeah. it's frustrating because yeah, as a as an investigator, as you know, all of us know it's so rare that you get emotionally affected that severely every time you investigate. <laughs> you know, it's like it just doesn't happen, but it makes it seem like every time you're on investigation, you get, you know, possessed or emotionally affected. It's just, I don't know. Yeah, because yeah. sometimes the spirits at the manor house just get tired of us, right, David? They just yeah. they they're in right now. Our spirits are interacting more with the tourists than they are with us. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah the, yeah, the the one the ones that interact with us the most here lately have been like I said, the ones I call pass throughs. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're just passing through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, so it's it's pretty interesting. I don't know. We were trying to think think of different things. What what causes them to? Is there different dimensions in there, or you know, because like the lady from England, it, is she does that dimensional plane come back once a year to where she can talk to us? Because when I looked back in my log, I was like, oh wait a minute, you know, hold up in June we got this and now she's coming in between those times again, but That's we don't hear from her from the rest of the year. Yeah. You know, no, that is. That's actually cool. Though. Long, you know, it's like, well, it's cool to have that data and that information. Cause then you can kind of start yeah. trying to figure it out. It's good that you have all that. Cause yeah. it is weird if you come back at the same time every year, you kind of start, is that some kind of anniversary or, or what's right. going on? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just very interesting to me. And like I said, when people are doing the investigations, I'll listen. And they're talking more to, like I said, the tourists than they are to us. Because I can, I you know, you can kind of hear that SB7 box. And you, once you've used that box for so long, you know the difference between a radio station and something that's not a radio station. Oh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. can definitely tell the difference. And yeah. Um, yeah, it's just it's funny how they're talking more to them than they are to us. I guess they're just bored. Yeah, it's funny as you're talking. I remember, I had an experience at um, Magnolia Grange over there by Chester, Chesterfield area. And um, we were, it was, I was actually used that's the one time I was using the spirit box, my spirit mm-hmm. box. And a voice came through and it goes, Don, it said my name, but you could tell it was not, it was like a totally like spooky voice. Like it wasn't from the radio. It was like kind of like um almost like a computer. Like it was a weird. I have to find that. I have to find that clip. But it was like gone. But the voice was so distinct that it, you could tell it wasn't really a, like a, a DJ voice or a, like a sound. It wasn't like a sound from the like the radio background or like speaking. It was clearly a voice that was coming through using that spirit box. Because yeah. it was like and it blew me away because I was like shocked. It goes gone, <laughs> and I was like what. And it was like, it was, you know what I mean? You guys know, it was totally a distinct voice. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just yeah, weird. I know exactly what yeah. you mean. Yeah. When I yeah, first so you- started my first season at the manor house, David went to go get the activity sheet and I heard my name called and I, I honestly thought it was him. I thought he had came in and called me. Well, he wasn't nowhere to be found. And when I opened the door, I was so shocked there was a tourist standing there and I was like, did you call my name? He's like, ma'am, I don't know you, but it just, it, it shocked me. And then when I got home and downloaded my body camera footage, when I was doing the tour at the basement with a group of people and we, and we went to go move to our next area, I heard my name in that same voice again. And it was a clear cut. It wasn't even on no SB seven box or anything. And I was like, damn, they know my name now, you know, which was really cool. And I, and I think I still have that piece of evidence because some of my stuff got destroyed when my um, external drive just, it just messed up. But I don't know what happened to it. It just stopped working. So, but it was just really cool. 
I think it is. I seen recently I was watching some stuff on YouTube and this these guys were kind of just like dissing on all the equipment, you know, the bait, you know, the like the spirit box and K2s and all this stuff. And I I mean as a science guy, I know there it's you know, it, it, it's the stuff that we were using is not the most scientific. No. But if you don't use the stuff and you don't have a lot of experience with it, like like we're talking about now, you know, the you there's things that come through that are obviously not part of the background talking and the background because these guys are just bagging on like, you know, Oh, you're just hearing it's picking out this word and that word. And no, 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 no. And I know what they're saying because it's true to a point, but if you don't use a device that much and you don't have experience with it, there's, cause even as a science guy, there's stuff that comes through that's clearly distinct. There's a voice that is not part of what's because you can kind of hear as it's going, you can hear the radio stations and things like that. And, you know, so I got frustrated kind of listening to these guys because I'm like, yeah, I know what you're saying is kind of true, but if you don't, if you use a device enough, you're going to realize that there are instances where something's talking that's not part of the background noise, you know. And I right. kind of got irritated with these people because they're kind of like they're kind of poo pooed all over it. And I don't know. I think some of these people that poo poo all over things just don't use them enough or don't, you know, they just want to diss on things. And it made me, I got mad a little bit to be honest with you. And if you don't use them, how are you supposed to know? Yeah. And even as a science guy, people like, I, I know people would be critical. I'm like, wow, how can you, a doctor, blah, 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 no, 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 no. It's like, but I've used them and I've had experiences like you guys were talking about where mm-hmm. something's trying to come through and it's, I, you know, I, you know, I can't scientifically analyze it for you, but I know there was, it wasn't the radio. Right. <laughs> it wasn't somebody on the radio just catching a little piece of what they're saying. It was somebody was trying to say something that was a distinct, different voice. That's, you know, you know what I'm talking about, but I got kind of frustrated yeah. with this this particular this particular show because it's kind of like I don't know. Yeah, and how do, how can they explain? You have a, a ghost box that like like my my brand new one. It it scans at 50 milliseconds. That's hauling. How do they explain a full word in the same voice? Right, when it's scanning at 50 milliseconds. Right. If you no, if you can if you can explain that to me, I'll get rid of it. Yeah, no, I'm there with you, man. I'm there with you. I know, you know, like you know, from a science standpoint, you don't want to believe it, but it's, it happens. I mean, sometimes you got to just accept that certain things happen. Yeah, yeah. So, Shayla like, wants to know. Oops, I'm sorry. Before I forget to ask you the question, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, when the next Miller Kite event will be because she hopes it sells out quick. Who was that that asked that? I'm Shayla. Shayla Poo. I am not sure. Um, I know Cherie was trying to get some stuff together. She'd have to check out um, the, uh, the Lunar Paranormal, uh, Lunar Paranormal Virginia. Cherie's, hopefully, I think she still has her Facebook page and see. I know Cherie had been cutting back just a little bit too, but I know she was talking. I know there's going to be a holiday. There's going to be a, a Halloween pumpkin event that's at the town, the Elkton Town Hall, which is pretty cool. Um, and then I'm not sure. I think she was going to do another Miller kite in the fall also. Um, so I'm not sure though, but I know in the fall coming up. So check out the lunar paranormal site. Cool. And where's that at? Cause I don't know. So Miller kite it's over in Elkton, Virginia. Like if you go, um, you know, if you go 33, like if you took 33 over the mountains, like from Charlottesville, you take Route 33 over the mountain, and it's right off of 33. Elkton's on the like intersection of Route 33 and 340, I think it is. It's right there, like in the Shenandoah Valley. It's on the west side of the Blue Ridge Mountains. You go over the Blue Ridge and then kind of come down. It's it's on it's in that area there. Um, it's yeah. in between. It's in between um, the well. It's in between the Blue Ridge Mountains and Har- and Harrisonburg. You know that kind of thing. So it's. It's closer to the mountains in Harrisonburg, but it's in that area there on Route 33. But the Miller Kite, so the Miller Kite Museum was, it was a house, obviously. And then um, the Miller, I think it was Miller Kite family owned it. And then Stonewall Jackson used it for a few days when they were starting out his campaign, the Valley campaign. And so he actually headquartered there. And there was, um, there was you know, obviously his troops. I think there were some injured Union troops that were there. Um so that was kind of the whole thing. Now it's a, uh, they try to get it back to the, make it look like the period as far as the furniture and all that stuff. And then they have a, 
the one room is all relics and um, memorabilia and stuff like that. So it's kind of a cool place. They have like the clothes. One of the Miller Kite boys got killed uh, during the Civil War. So they have like his clothes with actually has a hole in it from the bullet and stuff oh. like that. And, and a showcase. So they have different showcases and things like that. I think they got some of their guns and all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty cool. It's cool because they got museum type stuff, but then also the house itself is like a museum, kind of reflective of the time period. What well, we cool. get a lot of stuff there. We get a lot of consistent evidence there. It kind of like it sounds like with your your manor house. It's just there's certain ones that are always there, and then there's ones that kind of seem to pass through. And mm -hmm. uh, but it's I'm always blown away because every time I go there, I'm like, it can't be active this time, right? And then we go there and it was active. You know, I, I've never been there where it's not had something, some stuff happen. Mm -hmm. And and that's how what, how we feel about the manor house. You know, like we tell the guests, you never know what you're going to get. So we encourage them to record everything because that's a paranormal playground. Well, it's not a paranormal, playground, but it's a paranormal lab, just like Old House Woods is where Kimberly's at. It's a paranormal lab. There's so many different things that occur there, you know. Yeah. And it's not it's not too often that we get quiet nights. It's, you know what I mean? I mean, that stuff isn't being thrown around or anything like that, but it's very rare because if something isn't going on with the equipment, we'll definitely get something in the EVP. I don't think that there hasn't been a night where we haven't done the tour where absolutely nothing has happened. I mean, maybe. Yeah, I, know, weeks, but. I know exactly what you mean. That's how Miller, Miller Kite is. In fact, um, probably a couple years ago, a year or two ago, my sister came down and, uh, she was interested in it. I'm the oldest, and then I have a middle sister and a younger sister. But my middle sister, she's interested in like in Bigfoot and the ghost. And she she brought her daughter down, who's an adult, my niece, and they're like, "Hey, where can we go to have some experiences?" One time, I took them all to the Exchange Hotel. This was five, like five or six years ago. But they're like, "Where can we go to you know, obviously do some ghost hunting stuff?" So I said, "Let's try Miller Kite because it's always pretty active." And we went there, and sure enough, we were there for a couple of hours. We caught you know some EVPs. We were downstairs. You could hear footsteps upstairs walking. Um, we had our REM pods going off. So it was in, it had some SOS action. So yeah, it was like, even just in a short time with just me and my sister and my niece there, we, it was, we got activity. They were kind of blown away. We had the cat toy going off on a chair and in the one bedroom. And so it was kind of cool. Cause I was wondering, you know, you, you always talk up a place and then you, you know, you take people there like, you're going to, this place is going to be great and nothing happens. Right. But, it, but yeah, Miller kind of, we, we were there for like two or three hours and had all kinds of things happen. So it was nice for them to kind of have that experience. And for me, it kind of reconfirmed that it was, you know, that it was stuff going on there. So. That yeah, seems like a really cool place. I've just never heard of it. So. Yeah. It's kind of far from you guys. I mean, it's over the cross a bit over the Blue Ridge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're not too far. I think you're a couple hours from me. Yeah, I'm just in yeah, been, Charlottesville. Yeah, yeah, I've been to Charlottesville. I took the kids there one year, and we yeah, spent Miller the Kite day. Yeah, 142 there. miles from me. Well, if you ever get a chance, man, head this way. Let me know, and uh, we'll have to meet you there and hang out. Or they don't do a lot of public investigation or a lot of investigations there. But I think, you know, if you're interested, you know, you could I could talk with Cherie or whatever. It's a cool place to come to. Yeah, yeah, I got to find a different places to stay there. I am going to do an overnight trip with, with my youngest Victor. I just haven't figured out which, what area we're going to go to yet. And so we're, I'm trying to look at that. So I might reach out to you about that, even though it's right around the corner almost. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was just going to make him get up early in the morning. We were going to pack a bag and go overnight somewhere. Ah, there you go. Yeah. Well, you know, even though I'm not investigating, I still have stuff happen. It was even here in our townhouse, I've heard a little girl's voice a couple of times. Um, and it's not our kids and there's nobody outside kind of thing. And interestingly, a, a nine-year-old girl. So I live in a townhouse and this is like a block of, we're like in a block of five or six townhouses. But a few townhouses down, um, a lady I work with knew that the, a nine-year-old girl died from leukemia. So mm -hmm. it's really weird because I keep hearing this disembodied uh, girl's voice in our house <laughs> Recent, recently. So it's like, even though I'm not investigating, I still have stuff happened. And then at work, this is a few months ago, I had something touch my shoulder. I mean, legitimately push on my shoulder. I had my back, you know, I was working on my computer and my back was to the door. I was in this little office area. There was nobody behind me. And um, something just kind of gently kind of pushed on my shoulder. I mean, 
it wasn't like my shirt there was like something pushed it on my shoulder mm-hmm. i turn around like i'm like who came in here like i thought somebody was messing with me and uh, there was nobody there but that's still i still get all those stuff happening you know and that was one of those instances where you wish you could have had some something recording or something like that yeah never yeah you, <laughs> so yeah it never fails with them it's like you know, like you said, one minute you might have your body camera on and catch something and then it never fails where you don't have your body camera on or you have nothing around you and then something happens. It makes you just want to carry something all the time, but it happens so fast. Yeah. Yeah. You know, then we had a, we had a cool thing at work. I didn't, I don't think I shared this online. It didn't happen to me, but we had a guy, he had been in one of the rooms uh, on our unit for a long time and ended up passing away. And then you know, several months had passed and there was another patient who was in the room and um, they thought they actually saw the ghost of, the, of a guy and they were describing the guy and what he looked like. And it was the patient who had died in that room. Um, yeah. and so it was pretty amazing. So that was a cool kind of haunted in hospital story because the nurses, we, we, I went out to talk to the nurses and we're all pretty close and like, hey, did you hear about such and such saw the ghost of uh, in that room down there? I'm like, what? And they started telling me a story. That, yeah, like this. And the lady, uh, the person who witnessed this was kind of a down to earth, you know, a, a retired nurse who was a patient. So it wasn't like the, like it was a kooky person that saw something, you know, it was like a re- legitimate person, you know, that had a good, you know, that you could believe their story. And so, yeah, it was interesting. And it kind of made sense because the man had been in this room for a long time. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of a cool haunted hospital story. But it's funny, everybody always comes and finds me because they know I do this stuff. So I get to yeah. hear all the. <laughs> I think that's neat. You gotta see this. You gotta do that, and stuff like that. And they're like, "You should bring your equipment in." I'm like, "Yeah, I know, but I don't want to get in trouble." <laughs> well, I mean, there are haunted hospitals. Yeah, yeah. We well, you know, even when I'm walking around the hospital now, it's like every now and then you swear somebody's behind you. You know, you feel that presence. Or yeah. There's been times where yeah. I'm walking through like a long hallway. I see a lot of moving shadow figures. Yeah, or I hear footsteps. You hear footsteps. I've already stopped a couple of times. And one time I even put my phone recording behind me. I didn't catch anything, but you would, you would hear like somebody walking behind you and you're like, what? Stop and look, there's nobody there. And you start walking again and hear footsteps again. So it's just like, yeah. Yeah. It's like, they know that you put that. I I think it'd be really cool to investigate a hospital, uh, an active hospital. Yeah. But I would never do it just because of the respect thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my luck, I'd, I'd bump into somebody who just lost their father or something. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, I know, gosh, we're, I mean, we still have a little bit of time, but we do not have, like, enough time, I know, to talk about the afterlife, which was one of the things. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the subjects that I wanted to talk about, because we could talk an hour on the afterlife. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess I'll just come back again. Yeah, you'll just have to come back again. <laughs> I'll be a reoccurring guest. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to come back anytime. Yeah. Yep. So we can talk about afterlife because I have a lot of people that ask questions about that, you know, and I know that you're researching that, correct? Yeah. You're doing some documentation on afterlife. Well, I do a lot of reading and I, I taught when, when the patients, when patients are open to it, I'll try to talk to them about near death experiences. You just got to kind of feel it out. Um, like Dave said, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things you got to kind of figure out where they're at and where they're, if they're yeah. you know, being respectful about it. So the nice thing is, you know, based on, you know, being a ghost hunting guy and also interested in near death and, you know, being a physician and all that stuff, I am kind of able to bring it in to talks. Like I kind of feel people out. Like I had a lady, this is a few months ago, maybe six, seven, six months ago, she was going to pass away and she was kind of a believer because she was well, actually, what happened was I went in her room one day to see her and she was watching the ghost hunting shows, you know, discovery channel. So I was, we just started talking about it and all this other stuff. And um, we ended up having to make her comfort care, but we had a nice talk about, you know, I know it seems weird, but I think there is afterlife based on, you know, when you look at near death experiences and children with previous lives and, you know, ghost, ghost hunting I've done and stuff like that, you know, so it's able to kind of help people feel more calm about, the, their end of their lives so i feel like in a way it helps me be a, a you know a physician and it helps me as a doctor to have to do what we what we what i do and have the experience i've had and all that kind of stuff because you can kind of help people maybe be a little more comfortable with the end of their life and stuff like that so right 
Have you ever talked to one of your patients about that stuff? And then after your patient passes, have they made contact with you that you know of? Not that I know of, not that I know, of, but every now and then I wonder um, sometimes. Um, I did, I did have an experience just a couple of years ago where at, at the place at the other building where I used to work, um, a guy had passed and we actually, I had started talking, we were talking with him and his family about, about the paranormal stuff like that. And actually it was cool. It was cool for a couple of reasons. So first of all, his family called me or they messaged me on my haunted ND and they said, Hey, Oh my God, you won't believe the lights are going on and off like crazy at our house. And we think it's the spirit of, you know, our, our deceased loved one. So it was kind of cool to get that feedback because there were, the lights were acting strange and all this electrical stuff, kind of the typical after death communication. But for me, I was working and I have been it was working a night shift and I set up a couple things, pieces of equipment and it started going off. And I'm like, is, are you a male? No, 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 no. You know that, you know, how we do all that. And it, you know, it was a male. And then I said, are you, are you, is your name such and such? And sure enough, it went off, you know? Oh, wow. So that was kind of cool. That was kind of cool. Um, and then I actually had another episode where um, a doctor that I knew for a long time passed away and I was having, I was working a night shift again and I actually had the, the cat toys and I had uh, the, the chain of lights going off. And um, I, you know, I was going back and forth again, are you male? Nah, 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 blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, are you, is this Dr. So-and-so? And the, the cat ball just went nuts. And it, it was, you know, it was a fresh cat ball. I don't think it was, you know, I know there's some skeptical skepticism about the cat balls, but it was a fresh one. And it just started going off like crazy when I said, are you such and such? And uh, the, the doctor that had passed, I think if it was anybody, he was a, like a prankster. And uh, mm-hmm. if anybody would try to contact you or try to get in touch with somebody, it would be him. So the fact that I was able to get this kind of like, to me, it seemed like, I mean, I was talking with the, the, my deceased doctor colleague, you know? So, so yeah, so uh, those are two instances where it seems like I have gotten some back and forth, you know, after somebody who's passed away. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. And the doctor guy, he we never talked about ghosts. I don't know if you believed or not. He was a real science kind of guy. Like he was real academic and super smart. So I don't know. I don't know how he felt about ghosts, but it seemed like I was having a back and forth with him kind of. Well, he may have, he may have, since he was scientific, he may have learned up there to use his energy quicker. Yeah. He was curious. You know, they got to use, they're got to use energy and it. And it makes me wonder, I think. And I mean, I could be wrong, but I think, some people have they have to learn how to use their energy to set stuff off yeah it is curious to think about it's a good question and i think we probably all wonder it's like why you know why does some spirits seem like they can do stuff and others can't and why why is it cat balls one time and emf meter the next time but then they can't do the cat balls or you know what i mean it's like weird it's like why can you do this but can't do that but then you can do this and then you can't do that and it's weird i guess the mystery of the paranormal energies like yeah. you know why, and we'll never you know, why know. This- <laughs> that's the funny thing is none of us will ever know until we're there yeah i mean you know technically none of us will ever know what's there until we're actually there so yeah. but then for me on investigations that's why i always it's cool if you can get different stuff happening like cat ball and an EMF meter or the EMF meter and a static sensor or you know the, it's cool when you can try to get some collaborate or you got you know, you got an EVP and, a, and a something else going off, or you had a disembodied. Yeah. It's always cool when you can kind of combine things because I think it's harder to throw that stuff out. You know, yeah. if you're like, well, we had an SLS figure, K2 is going off, cat ball is going off, and I got an EVP at the same time. I'm like, you know, how do you throw that out? <laughs> you know right. what I mean? So, yeah. so I think the more things you could kind of get happening, you know, yeah. you know, it's nice. Or if you get repeated interaction instead of just one time kind of thing. And so, yeah. 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 Because the cat balls, we get some pretty good reactions out of that. And David and I, when we set those up, we make sure, because we set ours up on a table in the round table room, and we make sure to smack that table really, really hard to make sure those cat balls don't go off. Because when people walk in, we want to make sure nothing is shaken to where it sets them off. Yeah. You know, and so there's been times, and I know David has too, we've been, we've talk you know tell some of the stuff that happens 
at the manor house and all three of those things will simultaneously go off. It's just, it's interesting to me, you know? Yeah. I think it's good too. If you have the ability to like set up like a vibration sensor next, like, mm -hmm. you know, like the EDI loggers have a vibration sensor. I, we had a experience at the Hinsdale house where the cat ball started going off. Luckily in the video was a, was a, a data logger I had on the floor nearby. Cause one of, you know, one of the things is like, well, maybe there was vibration that could have made that cat toy go off. But the EDI logger didn't register anything, any vibration. So that was kind of nice to kind of say, well, there's really nothing. There wasn't a local vibration, at least detected by the EDI logger. And I think mm -hmm. the EDI logger is actually a little more sensitive than the cat toy. Yeah. They that are. Was, so you, when you're able to kind of set up something like that, or even there's other, you know, vibration sensors you, sensors you can set up. So if the cat toy goes off, but there's no vibration sensor. I, I think that helps. As long as you make sure your cat toy is fresh, you know. I know as they get older, they're not as reliable. So you got to make sure you have a fresh kind of cat toy mm -hmm. and batteries yeah. and stuff. But. Yeah. So I know nine o'clock already. Already. I know, right? Time flies, man. Gosh, especially on this show. Goodness gracious. It's like, oh my gosh. You always try to figure out what you're going to talk about and then you end up talking. And then it's next thing you know, it's like, it's nine o'clock. No, I know. It was always, well, it's nice to, you know, kind of put all our thoughts together and have mm -hmm. the, talk about the different experiences. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I wouldn't have thought to use an EDI box with cat balls. Yeah, wouldn't it, have, it, would not have thought to sense. do that. I have one, but would have not thought to do that. The other thing I have, I actually have it sitting here. You know, you're a ghost hunter when you got stuff sitting all around your desk. I'm down, I'm down in our first floor. It's like my office area. So I got a bunch of stuff on my desk, but mixed in is like ghost hunting equipment. But this is, um, I don't know if you've ever seen this one. This is like a little, you can charge it. It's like a little, it's a, uh, it detects a uh, vibration and stuff like that. So, oh, cool. so yeah, so if you put that like Mike, and you can change the sensitivity, like turning the red dial, you can make it real sensitive or not that sensitive, but it, it, it lights up on this thing here. Cool. Now, where did you get that? I got this from, I think it's Ghost Stop. I swear you've got so many different little toys. Yeah, you kind of see, so if you had a vibration sensor, and it actually marks how high it went. Like if something vibrated it, that mark, it'll tell you where it went. And it saves it. Really so, cool. Yeah. yeah, anyways, you could have any kind of extra vibration sensor to put it next mm -hmm. to the catway to kind of help validate what's going on. So That's really cool. See, that's why cool. I like Con MD. He always has these these little gadgets that I don't and know. My about. little flux, my flux. <laughs> I love that thing. I have yes, seen this is kind of cool. This is kind of oh. cool. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've seen that. those. I think that's all I got right now. I got some SLS cameras behind me there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, I love those. So. Yeah. Well, gosh, we you appreciate you. Thanks. Thanks. Well, you know, we'll ask you back on because it's always interesting topics to talk about. Always. Yeah, I'm glad to come on whenever you guys we want. having yeah. you on and we we appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to come on the show because I know you're busy. Oh, yeah. No problem at all, man. Yeah. yeah. Usually the evenings work pretty good. Like this this time is really good for me. Even if I got to work, I usually work till seven or so. So if at the latest, yeah. so or seven or seven thirty. So I can usually eight or nine, nine o'clock. I can come on even on work days and stuff. That. And if you want me to do a like a better talk about afterlife, I can do a little more research on it or a little more better, have better information and all that. Yeah. Yeah. That would be cool. So I'll, I'll look at calendar. Cause I know we're pretty, we're pretty set out. Aren't we? Cause I know that I'm. Yeah. We're booked up on, for September. Yeah. We're, yeah, we're, I'm getting booked up. I'm um, going to bring a person on the show. We're going to talk a little bit about quantum physics. So we've got some stuff. Yeah. Lined up. I can't even spell <laughs> come on on later in a, I can come on later in the fall or winter or something good because I'm gonna hopefully get yeah. out and do some skating again and I maybe have some good stories. Yeah. Yeah. So that works. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, we got plans. Yeah, everybody. So next week we have Mr. John Snowball Stevens with All right, John. I can't believe that we're already going into the third Tuesday. It's yeah. like the time flies by and that needs to slow down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it is. Actually, it's crazy. It's July like this already. I know. I know. So I said I had to look at my calendar today to make sure that I planned that trip with Victor. I was like, let me hurry up before school starts. So that's our little thing. Shayla, I like doing things like that, too, just leaving. <laughs> So give her a response to the to comment. I love those kind of trips. Yeah. So do I where you just get and you leave. Yep. Works yep. for me. So, but we appreciate you guys tuning in every Tuesday to Vibe Time with Jerry. We appreciate the support and we hope to see y'all next week with John Snowball Stevens when we talk about paranormal events. And if y'all can think of any events, make sure you reach out to him so that he can tell us on the show when he comes Tuesday. Good night, everybody. Good night, Thank everybody. <laughs>